Good morning, this is Stephen Pugh of the Home Bible College. It's January the 16th and we're looking at Matthew chapter 11. In the first part of this chapter, John sends um, two of his disciples to, um, to Christ to ascertain whether he is actually really the Messiah or not. You would have thought at this late stage that John wouldn't need confirmation like that, but clearly he did. And this is because um, Christ's ministry had now stepped up a gear. He had sent out the 12 disciples, which he named apostles, and they'd gone forth to preach and teach in all of the cities of Israel. And Christ himself had departed from there to preach in some of the cities of Israel. Now, John had been put in prison. So John's ministry is coming to an end and John needs to have confirmation from Christ that his ministry had been successful in the sense that he had pointed Christ to the people and introduced Christ as the Messiah of Israel. <clears throat> so when the people came, when the disciples of John came and said, um, John wants to know whether you really are the Messiah or not, he says, go and tell John the things that you have seen and hear. And at that time, he says, the blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, and the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Now these five messianic signs which accompany the preaching of the gospel are, are signs that only the Messiah would be able to uh, perform. So for example, we don't just talk about people who are blind, we talk about those that are born blind, those that are born blind. Even the scribes and the Pharisees acknowledged that only the Messiah would be able to heal people that had been born blind. It's quite something to heal somebody who had been going blind. But these are people who had never seen, no light had ever fallen upon their eyes. And then he also talks about the lame walk. And in this particular case, it means those lame that had never walked. It's not about a recovery. This is about a totally new type of living altogether. And the lepers are cleansed. Now, again, lepers had not been healed in Israel. This was totally a messianic sign. And he says, and the deaf hear. You see, when the Lord Jesus was casting out a demon, if the person that could not hear the command of Christ and therefore was unable to answer the question, what is your name? then that was a miracle that was way beyond natural ability, way beyond. It's, it's right in the area of messianic signs. And of course, the dead are raised up. In particular, it's those dead that have been dead for four days. The Jews believed that after four days, it then became impossible to raise the dead even if one was empowered of the Holy Spirit so so these are five messianic signs and he also says and tell him that the poor have the gospel preached unto them this is this doesn't mean poor in financial terms it means that those that are poor in spirit have the gospel preached unto them so this is right back in the Beatitudes again <coughs> And he says, and blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. So this is a personal message to John. He's saying, John, you are under the blessing of God if you are not offended by me. So as they depart, Jesus began to talk to the multitudes about John. And he says, what did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed? shaken by the wind oh what a wonderful analogy some people think that this is a joke of the lord jesus and we can understand how the crowd must have smiled or even laughed they didn't go out to see a reed being blown by the wind but what's ironic about the phrase is this is that 
is that um, <laughs> the teachers of Israel are symbolically represented by the reed they are the scribes they're the ones that write and they use a reed to write he said you didn't go out to see a reed shaken by the wind John never wrote a book he never wrote anything he never ever produced a copy of the sacred scriptures and this wasn't a reed shaking in the wind. This was a man shaken by the Spirit of God. He was shaken by the pneumatos, the wind of the Spirit of God. Lovely play on words there of the Lord Jesus. He said, you didn't go out to see a reed shaken by the wind. So what did you go out to see? Did you go out to see a, a person clothed in beautiful clothes, in soft raiment? No, if you want to see people in soft raiment, you have to go to the king's palace. So what did you go out to see? A prophet? Well, I'm going to tell you, you went to see more than just a prophet. Okay, you didn't go to see just a prophet. It's written about John. Behold, I send my messenger before my face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. John was the one who came to prepare the way for Christ's ministry. He was the one who came to introduce Christ to his ministry. Notwithstanding, um, he says, he says, among them that are born of women, there has not arisen a greater than John the Baptist. Now that's high praise. That's high commendation indeed. John is the greatest person in the world up until this time. And yet the Lord says that he that is least in the messianic kingdom is greater than John. You see, greatness Greatness in the kingdom is based upon personal humility. You see, it's the poor in spirit. Okay? It's those that are merciful. It's those that are pure in heart. These are the ones that are greater than all. So the, the more humble a man is, the greater he is with God. <clears throat> and then he goes on to say this. He says, all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. So John is the culmination. He is the pinnacle of all Old Testament prophets. He says, and if you will believe this, then this is Elijah. This is the one that came in the spirit and power of Elijah. Um, and he that has ears to hear, then let him hear that. Now he says, but what shall I like on this generation too? Well, it's like children in the marketplace calling to their, calling to their fellows and saying, we priped to you and you didn't dance. They've got the huff, you see. They're, they're put out. They're saying, I don't understand. We played a tune, but you didn't dance. Okay. And we pretended to mourn, but you didn't weep. <laughs> John and Christ, they did not dance to the tune of this world. They did not do what this world thought that they ought to do. Uh, John didn't come drinking, drinking, and yet they said he had a devil. Uh, the Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they said of him that he was gluttonous and a wine bibber. He was. They said about Christ that he was a man who ate too much, and that he was a man that drank too much. What a shocking thing to say about the Lord Jesus. They said, they say about me that he is a friend of publicans and sinners, and Christ would have been proud of that. Of course he was. Of course he was a friend of publicans and sinners. He says wisdom is justified by her children. What's that mean? Wisdom is, is personified into that of being a mother. And her children live wisely because she is wise. And the disciples live holy because Christ is holy. The disciples are able to understand the message of God. Why? Because Christ has taught them properly. 
wisdom is justified of her children <clears throat> and then the Lord Jesus began to upbraid the cities in which most of his mighty works were done because they didn't repent he says woe unto thee Chorazin woe unto thee Bethsaida he says for if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon then they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes and I say unto you it shall be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in the day of judgment than for you and thou Capernaum this was Christ's center of operations in the north he says thou Capernaum which art exalted unto heaven shall be brought down to hell for if the mighty works that have been done in thee had been done in Sodom they would have remained until this day but I say unto you it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the judgment than for thee now all the nations of the world and the cities of the world need to take note of this they need to take note that in the covenants God holds cities and he holds civilizations he holds nations responsible to him and if they have great privileges like the United Kingdom or the United States of America if they have great privileges then God will hold them to great responsibility and in the judgment these nations will be dealt with more stringently why because they had more great privileges <clears throat> at that time Christ spoke to the father and he says I thank thee O father Lord of heaven and earth because thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent and hast revealed them unto babes even so father for so it seemed good in thy sight all things are delivered unto me of my father and no man knoweth the son but the father and him to whom the son will reveal him and then he comes to verse 28 this is about the nearest thing we're ever going to get in the gospel of matthew to something that's it sounds like the Christian gospel but actually it isn't let me read it to you he says come unto me all you that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am meek and lowly in heart you shall find rest unto your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light this is the invitation of the Lord Jesus to Israel Christ's ministry was focused upon the lost sheep of the house of Israel and he is saying if you come unto me all those of you that are laboring and are heavy laden under the Mosaic law and in particular under the teaching of the scribes and the Pharisees you see the scribes and the Pharisees they put a heavy burden upon the children of Israel they put upon them literally thousands upon thousands of extra laws above the Mosaic law the difficulty with that was that their rules became something that obscured the people of God from ever properly keeping the mosaic law and that's what the sermon of the mount was all about christ was giving corrective ministry to correct the false teaching of the scribes and the pharisees and he was going to put them on the correct road and he says this he says you shall find rest unto your souls those that put themselves under the teaching of the lord jesus in the old covenant found that they had rest in their souls and he says my yoke is easy my burden is light those who come to Christ place themselves under his yoke this has nothing to do with Christianity because Christianity is not a yoke it's not a burden like this at all but he says but if you come under my ministry under my yoke you'll find 
that the burden is light and the yoke is easy. Easy just means that it's a yoke that doesn't rub the flesh. It's a yoke that doesn't leave sores. The yoke of the Lord Jesus fits perfectly and it is a lighter burden than the burden of the scribes and the Pharisees. Well, God bless you. Wonderful to talk to you again. Look forward to speaking to you in the morning. Bye for now.